Hi, this is Dennis for Media Maker Tips. And today we will answer one of the most popular questions, which is what camera should you buy for 2017? Well, first of all, I want to say that today we'll take a look only at mirrorless cameras. And why mirrorless? It's because nowadays they offer the exact same quality as DSLRs, but offer much more compact and lightweight body, which is simpler to handle and take with you when you're traveling. So, which of these cameras is actually the best? And the answer is, there is no such thing because it greatly depends on your needs as a photographer and what genres you are working with. So for this review we'll consider several categories and those are best all-round camera, best full-frame camera, ultimate choice, best for sports camera, best starters camera, best fixed lens camera, best compact and special category if money is no object. And in first category, best all-round camera, the winner is Fujifilm X-T2. And that's because it offers excellent image quality, arguably even better than some DSLRs. It has many features, such as dual SD card slot for professional use, great professional level controls and ergonomics, as well as improved autofocus system and weather setting. It also can record video in 4K so it will make finally for a decent video camera. Fuji cameras in the past struggled with that a lot. And unlike Sony cameras, it offers a lot of good lenses, so it won't be a problem. So in the end we have a camera that is somewhat expensive at $2,000, but that is well worth the money, no matter whether you are an enthusiast or a professional photographer looking for a lighter bag. Moving on, in the next category we have Sony A7 II as a winner. Funny thing this year is that previous camera, APS-C censored Fujifilm X-T2, actually offers a better image quality than a full-frame A7 II, and this is just crazy, but that's the case. So why then you might want a full-frame camera? Well, it still has advantage in a worldwide situation, not due to ISO though, as it used to be, but due to sensor stabilization, which is first of its kind in a full-frame camera. This will allow you to shoot exposures of up to one second long uh, handheld, which is might be handy in quite a few situations. Other than that, there are no technical advantages of Sony A7 II over Fujifilm X-T2, because the size is similar, the image quality is similar, video capabilities are similar. So maybe for the first time in history of photography, the camera with a smaller sensor is actually better than a camera with a bigger sensor. But more expensive also. Actually, as a matter of fact, Fuji X-T2 costs around $2,000 with a kit lens, whereas Sony A7 II goes for around $1,500. So go with Sony if you need that sensor stabilization, or a slightly cheaper camera, or a shallower depth of field. And moving on to ultimate choice, where money is of less importance than quantity, we have another Sony, Sony A7R2. And what makes this camera special is arguably the best in the world full frame sensor, which is paired with the stabilization, the same as in A7 II. We also have advanced focusing system, which is forward leading and cramps almost 400 points in, on the sensor. There is also almost full frame sampling in 4K recording, meaning that the footage is captured at higher resolution and then downscaled to 4K, which makes it much more sharp. So overall, this is a very solid camera. And you should definitely check it out if you have a budget for it. Next up we have a best camera for sports and mirrorless cameras had a big problem with that. But Sony seems to have fixed it. With the A6500 they offer a huge image buffer which can hold up to 231 JPEG shots or 110 RAW shots. And believe me, 
you want that huge buffer because this camera can capture up to 11 frames per second. And 225 face detect AF points always make sure your subject stays in focus. And last but not least, with the A6500, Sony brought their stabilized sensor into the APS-C sized bodies, which is great news for night photography without a tripod. As for the people who are just starting out with the photography or don't have a big budget, the great camera is a little brother of Sony A6500, which is Sony A6000. It's a great band for your buck because it offers virtually the same 24 megapixel sensor as a Sony A6500 and can shoot with the same frame rate of 11 frames per second. Offers 180 phase detect AF points, which is more than most DSLRs. Has electronic viewfinder and articulating screen, so it's very easy to use and it comes at one third of the price of bigger brothers. So if you just need a camera and you want to improve your photography, go get it right now. Moving on, we have best fixed lens cameras, and this is the only nomination where we have two picks. And that's because this category covers such a wide price range that these cameras cannot be compared directly. Thus, Sony RX1 R2 costs around $4000 and offers the same sensor as Sony A7R2, so you won't get any compromised regarding image quality with it. Whereas Ricor is uh, priced at around $600 and thus is much more budget-friendly alternative. It has APS-C sensor, so the image quality will be somewhere along the lines of Sony A6000. Next, we have a camera that will sell probably better than anything in this review, and that is because it has a great mass market appeal. So, best pocket camera of the year is Panasonic DMC ZS100. For the first time in a while, it's not Sony RX100 series, and here's a few reasons why. First of all, Panasonic has the same image sensor and thus virtually the same image quality, which will be great. But on top of that, it offers much more versatile lens, which ranges from 25mm to 250mm, thus you'll get 10x zoom, in-camera 4K video recording and great ergonomics, which include touchscreen and EVF. It costs about $700, which is somewhat expensive, but this camera is worth it because of its features and image quality. And for the end, we have a special category, just as I promised in the beginning, which is if money is not an object for you and you simply want the best of the best, then you should go for Hasselblad X1D. It is first in the world mirrorless medium format camera, and so theoretically it offers the best image quality of all. However, in real life it's pretty close to Sony A7R. But whereas Sony has a terrible user interface, Hasselblad excels in it. It has very modern handling and you can operate it just like you would your smartphone. On top of that, it's extremely compact by medium format standards. As a matter of fact, it's actually smaller than most 35mm DSLRs, and the bodies are handicrafted from aluminum in Sweden, so there is that. So this is the end of our review, thanks for watching, and if you want to check out more information and specifications on a selected camera, do not forget to check out our site mediamaker.tips. Also, you can check out the prices for all the reviewed camera, following the links in the descriptions of this video, and on that I wish you a great new camera and have a great holiday season. Bye!